Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Contingency Server. I played MPDM, your host, and today look at this, there's a big white spot on my map. And... Can you guess what that is? Yes indeed, I've built a thing! On the server I've built something, look at that, I've built a thing. So let's have a look. This is my new bulk storage room. I wanted to give it a sort of futuristic, slightly utopian factory warehouse theme. And, uh, well, you'll have to let me know what you think, but um, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So, these chests, uh, this is where I keep my space. So I've got, this one is full of space, this, uh, as we move to the wards the back here, there's some more space here, and I'm storing even more space here, and over here as we move around there's more space and towards the front here there's some more space as well and um, there's even more space here as well so I've got lots and lots of space stored up and um, ultimately I think I'll replace the space with other things but uh, at the moment I'm pleased with the amount of space that I've got ready to use uh, except for this bit, this bit is already got some stuff in it so I put my potatoes in the front here because they were just hanging out over here so they were convenient to just pack away I've also got my seeds here but I plan to use them for my project and uh, it's turning dark which is good because I like I like showing this place in moody brightness when it's getting dark so let's do that moody so the way that this is built I've got rows of glowing pumpkins above, uh, on top of the roof, kind of there. And then next to them is glass with carpet on top. And then underneath we've got this um, glass panes. So it looks as though the glass panes themselves are the lights, which is the effect that I was going for. I originally wanted to use white, but I think I kind of like the blue. Also, it looks during the day it looks as though you're looking through to the sky, which is kind of a nice effect, I think. Down here on the floor I've just got a pumpkin underneath each of these pieces of wool. And this is just black wool with a gold pressure plate on top. And it's made out of iron blocks, which of course we get that from the iron farm. So that is good. And then a little easter egg on... you know what? Uh, actually, no, I will show you on top, because the Dyne map's not going to get updated, so you're going to wait a long time to see this if I don't show you now. On top here, let's see if I can make it in one jump. Yes, I can. Over here, we've got Palladian Isles, PDI, and weird brackets, because they look cool. Shut up, they do. Alrighty, so as you can see, I have 53 levels of enchantment, as Doc M likes to call them. Um, so, it's time to repair a pickaxe. I've got this pickaxe, which I've actually ground down a little bit too much, but that's, that's alright. Let's repair my Silk Touch pickaxe. Da -da -da -da. Nice. Oh, and yes, the reason why I have so many levels is... A million wither skulls! I've been grinding wither skeletons like it's my job. I've been donating quite a lot to the effort to break bedrock, and I've been doing other stuff which I'll be showing you very shortly. But basically, this means I can have half a stack of beacons, or if I'm really cruel, I can unleash half a stack of withers on the server. I bet that would go down well. I'm sure Nuke would love it. Give him a chance to use all that iron. If you don't, if you don't know that story, uh, we once had a wither loose in the in the Nether, and uh, the only way that we could ultimately subdue it was to use iron golems to kill it, because it was just killing all of us way too quickly. All right, so my my theme for this area, let's go let's go through a little bit, because uh, I want to show you guys, and I want to show you what it looks like. So, up here, this kind of outcrop 
this is where I'm going to build my new main base. So that's going to be storage. Here's going to be my main base. Um, crafting stuff, you know, making potions, uh, nether portal, all that stuff. Immediate use food, immediate use materials. Excuse me. That sort of stuff going to be here in my main base. I'm sorry, I've got a bit of uh, hay fever going on right now. That's actually why I'm recording. I can't sleep. So that is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, going to be a sort of utopian uh, island resort theme. So that's like a warehouse for the store of the, uh, the island where they keep their food and things. And judging by how my voice is sounding, I think it may be time to take a little break. So I will be right back. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be at like a tropical island theme. And uh, I know that you guys already know that I wanted to plant a bunch of tropical plants here. And I still am going to do that. That is, let's say on the medium term horizon. I'm getting through a bunch of projects pretty quickly at the moment because I'm doing a lot of hours on the server. So hopefully I can reach that point relatively soon. Um, but in the meantime, I actually need to build something nice around here. So I'm going to have my chopper, I'm going to have my storehouse, and I'm going to have my main base here. And this lake, I've got some ideas for that too. Not quite sure if I'm going to do them, but I've got some some things that might work out there. Basically the idea is I want to put some snow underneath the water so that it looks like a really nice uh, coral beach lake, which I think would look cool. And then put some nice uh, vegetation around the edge and maybe make a little sort of jetty or something for canoeing and that sort of stuff. You know the type of stuff that goes on on tropical islands when they have a nice lake in the middle and they want to use it for entertaining the guests. Okay, so that's going to go up there and then obviously the front of this... Honestly, I'm not 100% happy with the front of this. I'm really happy with the inside. I'm really happy with how it looks here. And I'm quite satisfied with the roof and the sides. Not totally sure about the front here. Um, but honestly, I'm not sure what to do about it. So for the moment, I've decided just to leave it be and work on something else because I was spending too much time trying to figure out how to do it. So I'm leaving it for now. May come back to it at some future point, but knowing me, I also may not. So the next key thing is going to be my main base, which is going to be like the hotel. So it's going to be on the hill some nice stairs coming up to it and um, you know lush vegetation lots of water features lots of white walls glass you know the thing it's gonna look good currently working on it in my creative world but it's not done yet anyway so let's go to the weather farm because I want to show you something around there back in a sec Okay, we are here above the bedrock. And the reason for that is because down there, that is the way to the weather farm, this direction. But there's another little development over here. Dereth has been very busy on our server, as you've probably seen, or you may have seen. Use it own peril. Unsafe at the moment. I think we can handle that, hopefully. <laughs> Famous last words, right? And I can't see anything because of the beacon beam. Um, Dereth has been very busy, as you probably heard in Vibe's video. He replaced a lot of blocks in the um, spawn building with those double stone slabs that you're going to be able to get in 1.8. <laughs> um, so uh, that was a big project, and now he's done this, which is also a very big project. Check it out. This is a huge nether brick platform. This is exploiting some sort of glitch bug in the game, which uh, means that you can... Man, the fog up here is weird. 
Everything looks really strange. Oh, it's because I'm in the beacon beam. Lol. Uh, there we go. Hmm. Potions. I wonder what potions these are. Fire resistance. Ah, I see. And what's the way out, I wonder? Just through here? Looks like it. So up here you can see we got uh, another fortress mobs spawning. <laughs> oh, there's no strength beacon here. Oh dear. Is this one and a half high? No, it's not. So that's why the weather skeletons can move around too. There's a little tip, Dareth. If this is one and a half, if this is two and a half blocks high, the weather skeletons can't track you, and they still spawn, and they can't hit you and wear down your armor. So, uh, we can see that there's another fortress mob spawning, and this is exploiting a bug which is going to get fixed again in 1.8. Now, um, this is pretty cool. It's a uh, it's very interesting bug, and um, I think exploiting it is definitely the way to go, especially since we want so many skulls. Personally, I haven't been farming my skulls here, because I prefer to farm down there, but... Um, yeah, it's a very, very cool development. So he's built this all, all on his own. I mean, the nether brick he got from me. But uh, he's paying for that, so I didn't give it to him for free. And, uh, you know, let's do it fast. That's, uh, I reckon, very, very interesting project. Now, a lot of people will say, aha, well, if your nether farm is down here, and his huge platform, which is 64 by 64 blocks, is up there, then that's going to lower your spawn rates. And yes, that's true. Initially, that was concerning me as well. But if you think about it, let's go down here. I'm going to try to demonstrate to you that that's not a worry. So down here, we have the mobs. Oh dear, I'm under attack, apparently. Unless somebody else is. Oh, somebody else is. Okay, Harmony's here. Farming skulls. She is such a trooper. See, she's number one. This That skull's uh, scoreboard on the right is uh, number of skulls broken with a pickaxe. Or, you know, broken in any way. So, Or is it placed? I think it might be placed, actually. So, That's how many she's placed in her uh, bedrock destruction activity. Uh, she's number one on the server, and I think that is unlikely to be broken. Hi. Uh, anyway, so let's let's talk about spawn rates. The spawn rates are important if you're flushing the mobs from the system very, very, very quickly. So, if you think we've gone from uh, 127 to 255 in terms of their LC value, so that means the spawn rate is now half. Um, and yeah, you know, that's not great. Ooh, skull. Uh. It's not great, but um, it's really not um, a problem for a farm like this. Ultimately, this farm will probably get converted into a uh, standard, you know, pusher mob farm. Um, but even I think in that case, it's still not gonna. Just visiting. It's still not going to um, have a huge effect on rates, I think. Um, and ultimately, once 1.8 comes along, which is probably gonna happen before we even. She got an enchanted sword. Ouch. Um, it's probably going to happen before this thing ever gets converted into a piston pusher mob farm, so really that whole LC value, spawn rates thing is nothing to worry about. Stand still, will ya?
So, um, I was uh, slightly upset at the time, but then uh, I realized it, it actually really doesn't matter. Oh yeah, and another thing that uh, I should mention to you is that um, I investigated the mechanics of that prank that uh, the guys did on me last episode, and the chances of it actually breaking anything are small to zero, so um, we're not going to punish them quite as much as I thought we might. Um, the item frames thing, well I didn't lose anything valuable, for one thing, um, because I wasn't going to put anything valuable on item frames, obviously. Uh, so that's really a very tiny inconvenience, not worth getting bent out of shape about. So, as you can see, there's lots of slabs down here. And I have been expanding the slabbing of this area very greatly. Uh, haven't re... can't jump up. Haven't worked on this area yet, and I will. I ultimately intend to make the whole thing 120 blocks further out than the, the furthest extent of that uh, wither farm. So that is up to where you see the slab stop here, right, uh, right here. So that's 120 blocks further than the furthermost, furthest extent of what the farm used to be. I don't know if you noticed while we we're there, but there was some stone brick placed above. Oh no! Let's see if I can get it. Nope. Quite missed. Yes! Oh, that is a shot. I'm glad I recorded that. I've had so many, so many fails while I was <laughs> busy slabbing, so it's nice to get a good shot in. Alright, so let's let's go back up here. And the easiest way is to go up there. Gotta be careful, because I can easily land inside a block or in lava. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it was actually in the lava. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, as you can see, there's been ghasts been shooting this area out, so I don't know quite what to do about that. It's quite annoying. So let's see if I can do the impossible and end a pearl in there. Well, actually, let's play it safe. Let's just play it the safe way. So you can see there's a uh, stone brick here. This is three blocks in from the edge. Uh, I actually intend to build it out a bit further, so it's five blocks in from the edge. The reason for that is because I have been doing some thinking about my Wither Skeleton spawn strategies. Skype is going. Um, and I have uh, come to the realization that my original thoughts were not correct. So. Let's uh, let's just say this was the original walkway, which I th no, this was the original walkway, the width of it anyway, uh, which is um, pure Nether Fortress, right? So this is where the Nether Fortress mobs will spawn. What I thought was okay, what we'll do is we'll expand that by five blocks because if a pack of Wither Skeletons spawns here then we want the game to be able to place mobs over here as well, like from the same pack. We don't want it to fail. The downside of that is that of course if a pack of mobs is spawning here, probably pigmen or you know magma cubes, then we would also get some more pigmen and magma cubes inside the wither for uh, the nether fortress area. And I thought, well, you know, it's a trade-off, um, but because of spawning areas, it's probably going to be a good idea to do this. Uh, my new thoughts is that that's not correct, because if you think about it, let's, let's just think about one extra space. So the chances of... Actually, you know what? That's actually a little bit too complex to go into in a video. So, uh, well, in one of these anyway. I may make a video about it later. But the point is, don't do that. Just leave it the original with the the original Nether Fortress area. 
it's just better. The maths works out. So that's why I'm putting uh, full blocks above here, not just slabs. Full blocks will prevent all spawning, including the tiny magma cubes from here. And it'll stop packs from spawning here as well, so that's the uh, thinking behind that. And I have a little bit of extra work to do, still. So that is what's going on here. The other thing is that uh, spawn rates here are really quite good with one or two accounts going on. So I'm very pleased. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. So um, I'm going to head to the perimeter area. We're going to have a little look at the progress there. And because it's about a 10 minute trip, or maybe five, uh, I will meet you there. Yay, we're here! So, um, we have expanded the perimeter significantly. I built this sort of stair stuff at the edge, so it's easy to get up and down this platform. Um, and my frames are a bit low, you probably notice. That, I have found out, is largely due to the huge number of chests that we have lying around here. If you have a large number of chests, that kind of lags your client out. Um, so yeah, not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. And I think that was causing Tony's lag as well. I think he was wrongly blaming this machine for that. Anyway, um, I did actually notice that I didn't properly explain how this machine exactly works uh, in my last episode. So we'll just have a very quick look at that. And then have a look around the perimeter. Block is missing. All right, so Basically what we've got over here is this comparator is reading the dropper. If there is something in the dropper, it's giving out a signal. The repeater pushes the signal into this block. And the purpose of that is so that it can go both into this comparator, which is setting up the clock that causes the items to get voided, and this signal, which is triggering this RS normal latch. So here we have an RS Nora that you may recognize it or you may not. There's a repeater there that goes into that block that comes up here, that goes into that torch, that goes into that dust. So that's how that RS Nora latch is configured. And then we have this torch which is triggering it on this side and uh, the other side is triggered by the button, that's right, so it just gets reset. When you, when you press the button, it switches the latch, and then uh, this will turn on, this torch will turn on when the, dis when the dropper is empty, so that resets the RS0 latch. So that's how this system works. We have this is the clock, this is the latch, and over here we have the emergency stop, which all it does is make this torch turn on when you press it. That's that's all it really is. It's a very simple uh, system. It's just a T flip flop. So here we've got one of them uh, repeater systems with the locking repeater that gives a two tick signal to that torch, and that takes the signal up here. And you know, this is a cycling clock which is stopped by this repeater. Why is that repeater also two ticks? Is that necessary? I thought it had to be one tick. Well, if it's if, if it works with one tick, then uh, we might have it that way. Let's see. Seems to work fine. Okay, so that's how this whole system works. Uh, if you want to hear more about it, please ask me in the comments. But uh, I think everybody's bored with it by now. So here is our huge amount of storage. As you can see there are a lot of chests. And I will demonstrate for you that my frame rate will go up when we leave this uh, these chests behind because the chests get rendered when you're a lot closer to them than uh, than other stuff. So you will see them stop getting rendered at some point. Here we go. See that? And my frame rate went up very significantly. So it's either the chests or the signs. And I tested in the creative world earlier today. It's the chests. Maybe the signs as well, but uh, I know it's at least the chests. I didn't test the signs. 
So over here somebody's been digging in and there's another area that I wanted to show you. The amount of bedrock we've cleared here is truly amazing. Flames busy working. When I say we've cleared, the amount of bedrock that Nuke and Harmony have cleared is truly amazing. That's what I should really say. Skeleton, be gone. So he's got an enchanted bow. The, uh, the area difficulty level of this area is definitely at the maximum. So, uh, where is that new area that I wanted to show you? I think it might be that over there. So let's... And I'll eat while the ender pearl is falling. Yeah. Okay. So, go again. Yeah. So this is actually straight through now to the edge of the perimeter. And doesn't it look magnificent? Iron blocks is not the edging I would have chosen, but it definitely looks cool, and it's very, 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 very uh, cool that we can actually do that. You know, a lot of people will say that the iron farms actually break the game, but uh, it's a complex piece of technology that requires significant time and effort to build. And the results are that you can actually build with iron blocks, whereas normally that would be very difficult. So, I'm in favor of it, ultimately. The, uh, the restrictions on survival Minecraft really only make sense when you're talking about... Uh, let's stay out of range of those chests so we get nice high frame rates. To me, they only make sense when you're um, talking about the initial start initial start is kind of a, saying the same thing twice which there's a word for which I can't remember anyway point is I'm totally in favor of just breaking the game so to say uh, you know we get loads and loads of uh, pickaxes which is what allows us to do a project like this you would never be able to do a project like this otherwise and this is a difficult project make no mistake and this is going to be ultimately be used to produce a lot of resources, but it's a major investment of time and, uh, well, basically just time, because we get the uh, pickaxes from villagers, and we get the iron from, uh, we get the emeralds from the villager from the iron farm, so it just takes time to trade the iron to get the emeralds to buy the pickaxes and then to enchant the pickaxes and repair them and repairing them takes a long time even though this time somebody went completely ham bone and just repaired all of them I have no idea who did that but my goodness they just went for it alrighty hopefully uh, by the next episode I will have worked out uh, what I want to do with my Um, with my main base and I'll have something to show you guys but in the meantime I hope you have a great week and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video I certainly enjoyed making it and this is Blade in PDA and I am out